Hello everyone, I am Mr. S. S. Sazni from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sharad Institute of Technology Polytechnic and I am teaching the subject Thermal Engineering. We have already completed our first chapter that is Fundamentals of Thermodynamics and in that chapter we have studied all the fundamental concepts such as uh, different properties of system intensive and extensive properties the difference between heat and work as well as uh, several laws such as zeroth law first law second law of thermodynamics and uh, we have concluded the first chapter with uh, the applications of the second law of thermodynamics along with the uh, steady flow energy equation for uh, several thermodynamic devices such as boiler condenser turbine etc so whatever you have studied from the first chapter those fundamental concepts are very important because all these fundamental concepts will help you to understand uh, the further chapters so today we will be starting with our new chapter that is uh, ideal gas and ideal gas processes the second chapter on the subject thermal engineering that is uh, ideal gases and ideal gas processes so this chapter has a weightage of about 14 marks if we look at the theoretical part of this chapter then uh, the theoretical points from this chapter are very much less but uh, this chapter will have numerical treatment so we are also going to see some numericals based on this topic we will see several points from this chapter such as uh, what is the concept of ideal gases the difference between the ideal gases and uh, real gases as well as uh, we are going to see several gas laws such as Boyle's law, Charles law, Avogadro's law or uh, Gay-Lussac's law and after this we will see what are the several ideal gas processes such as uh, isobaric, isochoric, isothermal as well as uh, isentropic and uh, polytropic process we will uh, study what is the concept of uh, or how to represent all this process on uh, PV as well as TS diagram as we know that uh, many thermodynamic systems they work on uh, gases as uh, gas is uh, one of the four fundamental states of matter that is a uh, solid liquid and plasma but in this chapter we are going to just study about the gases and their behavior if we look at the history then the word gas was first used by the early 17th century by the chemist known as van helmont most of the gases are difficult to observe directly so they are described through the use of four physical properties and those properties are pressure volume temperature and the last one is uh, number of particles so these four characteristics or uh, the properties were observed by several scientists such as Robert Boyle or uh, Charles John Dalton Joseph K. Lussac so, so these are the laws which we are going to study in this chapter their uh, detailed study ultimately led to a mathematical relationship among these properties which are now expressed as the ideal gas laws as uh, shown in this diagram you can see that uh, we are going to study that uh, how the gas will behave with uh, the changing effects of uh, pressure volume temperature as well as uh, the number of molecules so we are going to study the behavior of gas with uh, all these four physical properties before starting with this chapter uh, we will uh, see what is the course outcome from this topic so after uh, the completion of this topic the students will be able to use uh, the first law of thermodynamics for uh, the ideal gas in closed system so in the first chapter we have already studied what is the first law of thermodynamics and uh, we are going to study regarding the concept of ideal gas in this chapter so after uh, the completion of this second chapter the students will be able to relate uh, the first law of thermodynamics with uh, the ideal gas for the closed systems so this was the co for this second chapter
as already we have seen uh, the history as well as introduction related uh, with this chapter we'll just take a, a review of this slide and then we will quickly move to the further slide in practical applications there are uh, many thermodynamic systems uh, that are using gas as a working medium so for understanding uh, the working of this thermodynamic system it is necessary that uh, we should understand how the gas uh, that is the working fluid will behave with the changing parameters such as pressure volume or temperature so for understanding this system with uh, changing behavior of gas it is very important that we are studying the gas behavior with respect to pressure temperature and other parameters also in this chapter we are going to study various basic laws of uh, gas as well as uh, the ideal gas process according to which it behaves in this lecture we are going to see uh, the following points so first uh, we will see what is the concept of ideal gas then uh, we will see what is uh, the difference between uh, real gas and uh, ideal gas then uh, we will see what are the assumptions of ideal gas then we will see uh, what are the several gas laws and uh, out of all these gas laws we will uh, try to complete at least one law today that is Boyle's law along uh, with the application for the same we will start this chapter with a new point that is uh, the concept of ideal gases so ideal gases are also known as perfect gas and uh, a perfect gas or an ideal gas is one that follows all the gas laws at all ranges of pressure and temperature so we are going to study regarding uh, what are all the gas laws in the further slides but for now we should just uh, understand that uh, the gas that follows all the gas laws and at all pressure and temperature we will call it as an ideal gas also we know that in case of gases the molecules are at far distance from each other as compared to solids and liquids uh, the gases have the molecules that are separated uh, from each other by a considerable distance so an ideal gas will have uh, no forces of molecular attraction because of uh, low pressure and high temperature molecules of gases are far away from each other and uh, so there is no molecular attraction between them in nature uh, no such gas exists but uh, real gases follow these laws at low pressure and high temperature or at both many real gases such as nitrogen oxygen hydrogen carbon dioxide they behave just like an ideal gas but uh, with reasonable tolerance they behave like an ideal gas at higher temperature and lower pressure as uh, the potential energy under the such condition that is at a low pressure and high temperature the potential energy of uh, the gas molecules is uh, very much less as compared to their kinetic energy however if we talk about the real gases at uh, conditions uh, such as uh, low temperature and high pressure then under such conditions uh, these real gases will fail to behave just like that of an ideal gas because at uh, high pressure and low temperature the intermolecular forces and uh, molecular size becomes important if we consider uh, low temperature or high pressure then uh, under these conditions uh, there is strong intermolecular uh, attraction between the gas molecules also at a uh, high pressure the volume of real gas is uh, often considerably larger than that of an ideal gas whereas uh, at low temperatures the pressure of real gas is often considerably less than that of an ideal gas also at some point of uh, low temperature and high pressure the real gases will undergo phase transition that is uh, it will get converted from uh, gaseous state to liquid or to a solid these are the actual reasons why we are uh, differentiating uh, the real gases with those of ideal gases in short uh, there are just two main points which we should understand from this slide the first point is that uh, ideal gas or perfect gas uh, these gases uh, are practically not exist in nature and the second most important point is the real gases will behave just like uh, ideal gas 
only under the conditions of uh, low pressure and high temperature or at both so if we are changing these conditions that is if we talk about uh, low temperature and high pressure then under such conditions the real gases will fail to behave just like ideal gases as we have now seen uh, the concept of ideal gas we will just see now uh, the difference between uh, real gas and ideal gas so in this slide we, uh, we will see the uh, difference uh, the first point is uh, the real gas is a uh, gaseous compound that really exists in the environment whereas uh, ideal gas is a hypothetical gas that does not really exist in the environment as we know that uh, about 78% nitrogen is available in the atmosphere or 21% uh, oxygen is available so the these gases that are present in the environment we can call them as uh, real gas however if we speak about uh, ideal gases then they are hypothetical that is they are imaginary and they do not exist in the environment so this was the first uh, differentiating point the second differentiating point in case of real gases uh, there are intermolecular attraction uh, forces between the real gas particles whereas in case of ideal gas uh, there are no any such intermolecular attraction forces uh, between the ideal gas particles so in the uh, figure we can see here that uh, in case of ideal gases all the molecules are free and they are not acting any kind of force on uh, the nearby or gas particles whereas in case of real gases uh, each particle each gas particle is uh, acting some uh, force with the surrounding gas particles so in uh, you can just remember this that in case of ideal gas uh, there will be no intermolecular forces of attraction whereas in case of real gases uh, there will be these uh, intermolecular attraction between the gas particles then again in case of uh, real gas the particles uh, will have a definite volume as well as mass whereas in case of ideal gas uh, the particles uh, do not have a definite volume and a mass and then next point is a uh, collision between uh, real gas molecules are non elastic and then again in case of ideal gas the collision between ideal gas molecules are elastic so we will see this concept uh, that is what is the meaning of uh, elastic collision and uh, non elastic collision uh, in next slide the next differentiating point is uh, kinetic energy of uh, real gas particles is uh, changed with collisions whereas uh, in case of ideal gas the kinetic energy of uh, the gas particles is always constant and the last differentiating point is uh, the real gas may behave as an ideal gas at low pressure and uh, high temperature conditions whereas an ideal gas may behave like a real gas at a uh, high pressure and low temperature conditions so these are the points uh, that differentiates uh, the real gases from the ideal gas now we will see uh, what are the assumptions of ideal gas and uh, you should take note of this part because uh, from exam point of view this question is important the first assumption for ideal gas is uh, a finite volume of gas contains a large number of molecules then uh, the second assumption the collision of molecules with uh, one another and uh, with the walls of container is perfectly elastic so let us just understand uh, this concept of uh, elastic and uh, inelastic collision because this uh, point has been also referred in the previous slide so let's understand this concept a perfectly elastic collision is defined as one in which uh, there is no any loss of kinetic energy in the collision whereas uh, an inelastic collision is uh, one in which part of uh, the kinetic energy is changed to some other form of energy in the collision so we are having here two diagrams with the help of which uh, we can understand the difference between elastic and inelastic collision so in the first diagram you can see that uh, there are two spheres uh, one is having 10 gram weight whereas the other one is having 1 gram weight so in this diagram we can observe that uh, the sphere with 1 uh, gram weight is initially at rest whereas uh, the sphere having 10 gram weight it is in uh, motion with certain velocity 
So when there is collision between uh, these two spheres, then again we can observe that uh, the sphere having 10 gram weight comes to rest, whereas uh, the other sphere having uh, 1 gram weight, it uh, gets in motion after this collision. So in this case, uh, there is no any loss of kinetic energy as uh, either one of the two bodies are uh, always in motion. Uh, either uh, prior to the collision or uh, even after the collision. So we call this as uh, elastic collision. Now if we speak about uh, inelastic collision then uh, we can refer with the second diagram where we can see that uh, the two cars are uh, having a great impact with each other. So in this case both the cars were initially having some velocity but uh, after this collision uh, the kinetic energy is uh, totally lost and uh, it is converted into some other form of energy that is we can say either a sound energy or a heat energy. So we call this as an inelastic collision. With these uh, examples I hope that you have understood uh, the difference between elastic and el inelastic collision. Now coming back to assumptions of ideal gas we have seen uh, two assumptions that is uh, the second assumption was regarding the collision. Uh, the collision of molecules with an, uh, one another and with the walls of container is perfectly elastic. So in case of ideal gases, uh, whatever the collisions are uh, there in between the molecules, these collisions are considered to be elastic. Then uh, the third assumption of ideal gas is uh, the molecules are separated by large distances compared to their own dimensions. And the last assumption of ideal gas is uh, the molecules do not exert forces on one another except when they colloid. We have already seen this point uh, in the differentiation between uh, real gas and ideal gases. So these are the four assumptions for ideal gases which uh, you should remember. Now let's see what are the gas laws. Right from the introduction of this chapter we are talking about uh, the gas laws. Uh, just in the definition of ideal gas we have seen that uh, the gas that follows all the gas laws we are calling it as an ideal gas. Gases are uh, the only state of matter that can be compressed very tightly or uh, expanded to fill a very large space. Uh, one of the most uh, amazing thing about gases is that despite of having uh, wide differences in chemical properties all the gases uh, more or less they obey the gas laws. The gas laws uh, deal with how gases behave with respect to pressure, temperature, volume as well as uh, the molecules uh, that are present in it. The behavior of gas undergoing any change uh, is studied with respect to its pressure, temperature and volume. Its uh, behavior is governed by the following laws. So we are going to see all these laws in details that is uh, Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law and uh, the fourth one that is Avogadro's law. In today's lecture uh, we will see at least uh, the first gas law that is Boyle's law. In the year uh, 1662 uh, Robert Boyle uh, studied the relationship between uh, pressure and volume of a gas of a fixed amount at constant temperature. Uh, he observed that a volume of given mass of a gas is uh, inversely proportional to its pressure at uh, constant temperature. Uh, Boyle's law which was published in the year 1662 states that uh, at constant temperature the product of the pressure and volume of a given mass of an ideal gas in a closed system is always constant. So uh, this can be verified experimentally using a pressure gauge and a variable volume container. Uh, we will just see the statement once again and then we will understand this law with the help of uh, the diagram. So the statement of Boyle's law, the absolute pressure exerted by a given mass of gas is uh, inversely proportional to the volume when the temperature remains constant. So uh, you can simply remember this statement just by remembering uh, the mathematical expression for this law. The mathematical expression is given below. If uh, P is the absolute pressure and uh, V is the volume of gas, then uh, the pressure of gas is inversely proportional to the volume 
or in other words we can say that uh, the product of pressure and volume is constant uh, but here the important thing is uh, you should remember that this condition will prevail uh, if the temperature is constant so this is the Boyle's law now if we refer to the diagram that has been given here then uh, we can see that uh, there is a closed container in which a certain amount of gas is placed the black dots which are shown in the container those are nothing but uh, the molecules of the gas uh, we can also see that uh, above this gas a piston which is represented by red color that is nothing but uh, the piston and uh, on that piston uh, the green color indicates that uh, several weights are used and these weights will uh, help to exert some pressure on the gas in this way if we are uh, increasing the number of weights on the piston then it will uh, increase the pressure on the gas and on the other hand if we are removing these weights uh, then the pressure exerted on the gas will decrease so in this animation uh, we can see that uh, the temperature of the system is kept constant whereas uh, the pressure and volume are changing so the variation in uh, this pressure and volume uh, is plotted on the PV diagram so you can see this PV diagram on the right side uh, in PV diagram we are always having pressure on X axis and volume on Y axis so with uh, the changing condition of this pressure uh, we can see what is the effect on volume in this PV diagram from this animation itself it is clear that if we are increasing the pressure on the gas by exerting or by placing uh, the weights on the piston then it increases the pressure on the gas and as a result of which we can see that uh, the volume of the gas is going on decreasing similarly if we are removing these weights then uh, the pressure exerted on the gas will decrease and uh, at the same time there will be increase in volume so this shows that uh, there is inverse relation in between pressure and volume and uh, thus uh, we will get the curve or uh, the variation in between pressure and volume which is uh, represented in the PV diagram so from this experimentation we can simply say that if uh, the system is having maximum pressure then uh, it will be having uh, least volume at the same time or vice versa we can also say that if the system is having uh, a greater volume then uh, the pressure uh, of the system at the same time will be least thus if a uh, gas changes its volume from v1 to v2 and pressure from uh, p e1 to p2 at constant temperature then as per Boyle's law we can uh, write this expression as p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so this was all about Boyle's law we will also see one example for this Boyle's law though these applications are never asked in the paper nor it is included in the syllabus but uh, with this example you will understand uh, what is the importance of studying the Boyle's law so uh, we will see the example of diver so diver is actually a person who stays underwater for uh, longer periods or uh, he is a person who swims underwater using uh, special breathing equipment so we are having one diagram here uh, which shows that uh, the diver is at uh, a certain depth that is of about 40 meters and uh, in the other part of this diagram we can see that uh, the diver is at the surface of the water body so uh, in this application uh, actually a diver experiences approximately one additional atmosphere of pressure for uh, every 10 meter of depth due to uh, weight of the surrounding water so this actually means that if the diver uh, starts to swim inside a certain depth of this water then as he goes inside the water then uh, due to the surrounding weight of the water or whatever the water is available uh, above that uh, person so due to that weight of the water the atmospheric pressure goes on increasing as he moves inside the depth so for example if we consider that if the diver is at 40 meter depth then uh, he will experience uh, the pressure of about 4 atmosphere as we know that uh, the atmospheric pressure at uh, the surface level of the water will be nearly about uh, one atmospheric pressure so uh, when the diver is at a depth of this 40 meter the pressure is increasing four times that it is about nearly equal to four atmosphere 
so with this increase in pressure uh, we can understand that as per boyle's law there will be some decrease in volume so at such depth if the diver requires uh, additional air for uh, breathing then uh, he will get that air from the equipment which he is carrying uh, on his back side so uh, the equipment will be having enough air for uh, providing the diver enough oxygen for the breathing purpose now if the diver wants to come to the surface level from this step then uh, there might be a great problem because if the diver holds his uh, breath and uh, rises to the surface quickly then uh, the outside pressure will again drop to uh, one atmosphere from four atmosphere so here there will be a large drop in pressure and as per boyle's law uh, due to decrease in pressure there will be a large increase in uh, volume so since the pressure is decreasing by a factor of 4 uh, the volume will also expand by a factor of 4 so whatever uh, the air that is present in the lungs of this person that will also increase uh, or it will expand and it will cause a great damage to the lungs of that person hence it is necessary that whenever the diver is swimming from a certain depth towards the surface level of the water then uh, he should always exhale that is he should always breathe out the air while uh, coming from the depth to the surface level or or uh, we also call it as rising so this was the application for boyle's law now uh, in the next lecture we will uh, continue with uh, the further laws that is charles law and uh, the remaining part so till now we will stop here thank you very much